reciprocal functions uh, of linear and quadratic functions. So in advanced functions, you may run into this topic of doing reciprocal functions. Now, doing reciprocal functions in general, uh, kind of for rational uh, uh, functions, is actually not very easy, but it turns out that if you kind of start with first understanding the reciprocal functions um, with respect to linear and quadratic functions, um, then hopefully you might get some kind of an idea on how to construct these. Now, of course, we have tools which I utilize all the time, like decimals, so we can, I mean, we can easily graph these things, but being able to understand these reciprocals sometimes is kind of useful. And because you're studying it, you know, if you're doing advanced functions, most likely your teachers are gonna be bugging you about sketching these things. Um, so, you know, I'll give you some hints in here with respect to these linear and quadratic functions and then taking the reciprocals of them, all right? Now, everyone should remember, you know, linear functions. So it's your regular mx plus b. So, you know, m is your slope, b is your y-intercept. So they're just lines. So that's not a big deal. And then I hope everybody remembers the quadratic functions, right, which you most likely started in grade 10 um, and then grade 11 and so on. So now in advanced functions, you should be okay. I will make the assumption that, so as you can see on the screen there, the g, g of x or g at x, um, the quadratic is kind of in vertex form, all right? So it's A, okay, which is the scaling, and then you just have X minus H squared plus K. So your H and K is basically your vertex, and then we can draw our parabola um, accordingly or sketch it, all right? Now, if it's not in this form, you can obviously put it into vertex form. If you forgot about that, maybe I'll put up a link up above and to, to one of my videos there, um, but I'll make the assumption that it's already in that form so that we can start sketching. Uh, the next item is, you know, what is reciprocal? And this will probably date you back into elementary school when you were doing um, uh, fractions. So when you're doing fractions, you know that the reciprocal of a fraction, so just kind of a, a deja vu for us here, is that if you are given a fraction, and I'm gonna assume that it's you know in fraction form, so it's not a mixed number or something like that. So if we have a fraction and we wanna find its reciprocal, then all we would do is we would actually swap the numerator and the denominator. And the key idea was that when you multiply the original fraction by its reciprocal, so when you were multiplying these two, so three over four multiplied by four over three, okay, the answer is always gonna be equal to one, all right? So that means if your original one is negative, okay, the reciprocal also has to be negative because the two negatives would have to cancel out so that you get your one back, all right? So we'll think about that because it's kind of useful, as you know, functions. Um, so basically they're just mapping on, so you're gonna get some output Y, you know, you have your, some, your input X, get your function, you get your output Y. So that means if we wanna find the reciprocal, then all we're really doing is, you know, once we know what our output is, okay, our um, output for the reciprocal would have been simply just one over Y right so that's what we would do and we're going to be trying to sketch in that way okay so let me give you kind of a little bit more with regards to this okay so the first one so f of x if you're trying to do the reciprocal of that okay and um and you're going to try to graph it then really the reciprocal okay is going to be one over okay mx plus b and again so it comes from if you multiply these two Okay, um, f of x and then it's reciprocal. So, you know, maybe I'll put a f of x, you know, a little r here for reciprocal. So if you would multiply these, if you take f of x and then you multiply it by the reciprocal, um, you'll notice that it will cancel out and you're gonna get your one. Now, of course, when we are doing reciprocals, we're gonna run into problems uh, because we do have a denominator and then that denominator we know can't be equal to zero because it will not be defined, okay, at that particular point, at least for this case, because it's a linear, so it's gonna be a point, okay? For the quadratic, it's the same thing. So if you wanted to find the reciprocal of your quadratic, you do the same thing. So finding the reciprocal is just swapping, okay? And what that means, you know, we're gonna get this in the denominator, which again is gonna give us some issues 
because uh, we're gonna have to watch out so that the denominator is not equal to zero. So we're gonna need to know what those particular points are. Um, but I will uh, talk about that, okay, when we're graphing um, all of these items. So let's take a look at an example. So I'm gonna take a, a line, okay, so a linear function, and then we're gonna try to do the reciprocal and we're gonna be sketching it out and then I'll show you um, utilizing decimals, you know, like as you kind of vary your slopes and your y-intercepts, you know, what might happen and then what are some of the properties that you should look out for, okay, with respect to these linear lines and then their reciprocals. And then the same thing will follow for the quadratic functions and then their reciprocals, all right? So here's an example. So let's just take a line, okay, so an, an arbitrary line in here. And I'm gonna kind of change paper and let's uh, put the paper to a grid, okay, so something like this. And now I'm going to, let me scroll down here. So let's assume, uh, instead of writing f of x, I'll just write y, which is much more common for us. So let's say we have, you know, our line, y is equal to x, and let's make it, let's say, plus 1, okay? So it's not very difficult to try to sketch this out, uh, because now, I hope by now, you know, you're kind of familiar with sketching these lines, all right, so this is my x, this is my y, so we know that, so let's assume that this is one, okay? The slope is one here, okay? The y-intercept is one. So we have a nice line, which uh, basically will go kind of through here okay, and continue on. So that's my um, function, or in this case relation, because I wrote y is equal to x plus one. Okay, so there we have it. Now, how would we try to sketch its reciprocal? So our reciprocal is going to be, so maybe I'll do, a, do it in a different color so it stands out for us. So we know that if we take this, okay, its reciprocal is going to be one over, and in this case, it's x plus one. All right, now right away in here, for our regular line, we know that the domain is all of x and the range is all of x. We don't have anything extraordinary here. Graphing lines is super nice, right? Uh, there's no asymptotes, you know, nothing crazy is happening. So those lines are nice. But here, okay, with this, well, we know that this is kind of coming from the parent function of one over x. And if you remember that, those one over x um, functions, those parent functions looked a little strange, right? So let's take a look and see how we would graph it, but to use the information from the original line. And the idea, okay, continuously is going to be that we're gonna take the reciprocal, meaning my original y that I have, Okay, and then multiplied by one over y for each point is supposed to be equal to one, right? Because they're reciprocals, okay, of each other. Now, I'm not gonna, it's not gonna be a perfect sketch, but I'll try to give you some kind of context on how to approach these. And this is for any line that you would have. So first of all, we have to be careful. Like notice that for x, okay, at negative one, okay, so at this point, you know, um, our actual reciprocal doesn't exist. So right away, we notice something interesting that at negative one, which is gonna be this point here, let me kind of sketch it out. So if I would draw a line right here, we know that this is not going to exist. And again, because coming from our parent function of one over X, um, we knew that that would happen, right? So this is just being kind of shifted over to the left and it coincides with, so within here, so it coincides with your original function crossing the zero. And that should make sense to you, right? Because the zeros of your line, well, it's gonna be only one zero because it only crosses at one point, but the zero of that line that we have, we know if we take the reciprocal, it's gonna be one over zero. And one over zero is undefined, which means we're gonna have an asymptote, of a kind of a, a vertical asymptote at that point for our reciprocal function. And now from there, we can kind of see, okay, so what happens, right? 
Okay, so we have, and again, so what I'm gonna try to show you is the following. So always think back, okay, what is my original? When I multiply it by one over y, it's supposed to give me one, okay? So let's first kind of approach, um, so in this case, let me kind of remove this, and let's approach, you know, what's happening here. So at this point, so past that zero of our original line, we notice that all our values of y are negative, correct? So if all of these values are negative, in order for this statement, this reciprocal statement to be true, we know that all of these values have to be negative as well, because negative times a negative is gonna give us positive. So they can't be positive. So that means they're gonna be on the negative side of y somewhere. Now, what else do we know? We know, so for instance, as we're moving in this direction, so let's say as we're going in this direction, what's happening to y? Well, y is getting smaller and smaller, right? Now it's negative, so the magnitude's getting bigger, but it's getting smaller as a number, right? So it's just being, you know, um, for example, negative two, you know, negative, you know, so on, negative three, negative four, but it just keeps going and it's getting smaller, more negative as we go along. So if this number in magnitude, okay, is getting smaller, okay, as we're going in that particular direction, this number right here is supposed to get bigger, okay? But now how is it going to get bigger? Because it's one over y, right? So within here, so notice if I have this and this was minus two, then notice what's gonna happen. This is gonna be one over that. If this was negative three, then, okay, my answer is going to be one over negative three, and then so on. So what's happening here, so notice that these numbers are actually getting bigger. Now, it, it's, it's, it's very deceptive because of the fact that, you know, you're seeing um, a fraction, but notice that they're negative numbers, right? So they're kind of getting bigger, so they're getting closer and closer. So as this kind of moves on, what happens in there, okay, those numbers are getting kind of um, bigger as we're coming, coming along. Now, as you get closer to that, to this point right here, so as you get closer to here, right, what's going to happen there? Okay, so what 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 is going to happen as you get kind of, you know, as you get closer and closer to that point? We know that it's gonna be zero, right? But those numbers, okay, as you're getting there, are getting bigger, which means that all of these are gonna be getting smaller, okay? So these right here, so this is, kind of going to be going like this. It's going to be, you know, going in this direction, all right, in this way. It's going to be going in this direction, so closer to that, so that y is equal to um, zero point. So it's kind of going to look like that. And we know we're going to be joining them, right? Now, we, we, we will know at what point, okay, it kind of joins up. All right, so at what particular point, you know, where do these these two um, intersect? Okay, so in, in this particular case, they're gonna be intersecting at some point and then carrying on in this way. So it's gonna look like this, and it's gonna look like that. Now, on the other side, okay, so as you're going from zero, and then you're moving into the right direction, um, so notice that in here, so as, as I'm going in this direction right there, my y is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? Which again, so as those get bigger, that means my one over y, so the reciprocal is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. And again, it should not surprise you, okay? So as we're kind of going through, so what's gonna happen is this is going to get in this direction and then it's gonna get pulled out, okay, like that. And that is exactly from our parent function of one over x, right? So it's gonna be one over x, which is really just shifted, okay, to the negative one, okay, being our centralized point, which is our asymptote. So that is um, not a big deal, okay, there. Now, here's the thing. Where do these intersecting points, now notice that right here, my intersecting point happens at one. And that should make sense to you, right? Because if I go back to my reciprocal, all right, so notice, 
right? Where do they intersect? Well, if y is equal to 1, notice times 1 over 1, okay, is equal to 1. But 1 over 1 is just 1. So they always will intersect at the point 1 or negative 1, right? Because if this was negative 1, okay, and I put a negative right here, it's going to be also 1 over negative 1 is still negative 1. So for, for lines, now this is for lines, okay, they're going to be intersecting at this particular point. So I can make a much better graph right here, okay, instead. So I know, so where is my 1? Well, my 1 is right here. So this thing, it kind of goes like this, okay? It goes through 1, and then it skyrockets downward, like that. And those are my two points. So this is negative 1, and this is 1. So that's something that we should learn, right? So let's write down these things, okay, with respect to the original line. So if you're given a line, and by the way, this is going to be the same thing, you know, once you have a quadratic, okay, so these points are going to be the same. So let me just write this out for you, okay? So things to keep in mind. First of all, if you're given a line, which is mx plus b, okay, at each zero, so each zero, now for lines there's only one zero, meaning crossing, okay, of the zero, okay, axis. So at each zero, there is going to be a vertical asymptote. So there is a vertical asymptote. That's what we have, and this is what that asymptote was. So within here, so that's what this was. This whole thing, that's the vertical asymptote. Notice we had a zero at negative one, and that created a vertical asymptote. So that's what will happen at each kind of crossing of zero. So that's first thing to remember. Now, the next thing to remember um, for the uh, reciprocals of lines, okay, um, you will find something which is interesting. And this, co this comes from the fact that, you know, if your original, so here, if your original, so if your original, in this case, um, mx plus b, if this is positive, that means your reciprocal also has to be positive because of this, right? One can't be positive and the other one negative because then the reciprocal uh, equation won't hold. So if the original is positive, the reciprocal is also positive on the same, on the same domain. Okay. So on the same domain that we have. So in this case, for us, okay, um, basically what we've noticed that for x, okay, which was I guess from negative infinity to negative one, notice that this. Okay, our resultant y was basically less than zero, which means our reciprocal is also has to be less than zero. And now for here, okay, if our x, okay, in this case, which is from negative one to positive infinity, in this case, my y was greater than zero, which means my reciprocal has to also be greater than zero. And what that does is now it creates an asymptote Okay, at y is equal to zero. So that means that within here, you know, we will have this y is equal to zero kind of asymptote. So here, so original is positive, reciprocal is positive on the same, okay? And this means that at y is equal to zero, so that's a flat line, okay? It's a horizontal asymptote, horizontal asymptote. All right, so that's another item that we should know, okay? Now, there is something else, okay? Now, your intervals. So on your intervals, so whatever interval that you carry, okay? So the, the intervals on the original, so on your line, are increasing. So if these are increasing, if they're going up, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us, so notice, if this is going up, then that means this is gonna have to be coming down, right? Because if we want it to be equal to one, that's exactly what's gonna happen. So if y is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, 
if you put one over y, which is the reciprocal, that means one over a bigger and bigger and bigger number, means that it's getting smaller, okay? So if the intervals are increasing, the reciprocal must be decreasing and vice versa. So if the interval is decreasing, that means the reciprocal must be increasing. So if the number y is getting smaller, so if this y is getting smaller, okay, then one over a smaller and smaller and smaller number means that the overall this number is getting bigger. So that really isn't a surprise, and this is not just for, for lines, okay, this is gonna be also for your quadratics and, and uh, your other functions that you have, all right? So now the last item, okay, um, in here is, now this is, if your function, okay, is equal to one or negative one, right? So those are the points of basically intersection. So if your function is equal to one or negative one, then that means your reciprocal, reciprocal function also has to be equal to one or negative one at exactly the same x, at same x. Now, once we have these, you know, and we start thinking about this, this helps us in trying to sketch these things out, all right? So now I'm gonna bring out the decimals and kind of, you know, we can um, put up just general lines and then you'll see that all of these things are gonna be holding and we can kind of guess on what's going to happen, okay? So let me bring decimals up. So here is decimal, so f of x or first one's gonna be, let's say, mx, you know, plus b, Okay, so that we can make these. Now we had m was one and b, I guess, um, was also one. So this is our original one, okay, that we drew. Um, that's what we have, so that's our line. Now, if we draw the reciprocal, so one over, okay, f of x, notice this is exactly what we sketched out. So at negative one, so this is at negative one, which happens at x is equal to negative two. Um, the two lines, the reciprocal and the original line intersect. And here is, okay, at one, which happened at x is equal to zero, okay, your line and your reciprocal also are intersecting. So this is what we have there. And now notice when kind of, once the crossing through the zero happens, we have an asymptote there. Okay, so we have an asymptote um, at, this is gonna be x is equal to negative one, right? So notice that, that's my asymptote. Okay, that's the zero crossing of the line. And then past that crossing, so as you go down, so the numbers become more negative and negative, notice your entire uh, reciprocal is also negative, right? And so as it goes down and further and further and further, okay, so on the negative side, okay, the reciprocals, okay, relate back. And that's why we have this nice kind of graph throughout. On the positive side, when the line is positive, notice that your reciprocal is positive as well. And as the um, original line gets closer to zero crossing, okay, we notice that there is a blow up there. And then as it gets further away, meaning your y is getting bigger and bigger, okay, and then there's you have this fading off. So your one over y is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? And this is for any, you know? So I mean, I can change, we can change the b, okay? So notice if we change the b, let's say to three, okay? So in this case, we have a y intercept of three, so it's gonna shift over the, um, the zero, okay? So notice that, so here, at one, they still intersect, and at negative one, they still intersect, so it looks exactly kind of the same, it just gets shifted over to the left because my zero shifted over, and everything else is pretty much the same. So now if I kind of move these around, so notice as I move and make B bigger, which the crossing of zero just gets further and further to the left, so notice that your reciprocal function also shifts. And if I make these the opposite, 
okay so notice that your reciprocal is also shifting with the asymptotes all right so that's what you have in there okay so this is kind of what we're doing right there okay so now with your slope uh, it's the same thing right so your slope all your slope is going to do is it's just going to make it i mean if it's positive it's going to kind of shift the line like this and then it's going to make it more steep right um and then if it's still positive if it flattens it out it's going to go more like this and then you're going to see kind of the reciprocal so if i move this around let's kind of go this so it's one now if i make it steeper notice that your reciprocal okay also gets kind of compressed in and that should make uh, sense to you okay because that m that you have um, is going to be uh, your slope so this is what it gets pulled in and then okay as it gets flatter okay so notice as it gets flatter okay in this way and then obviously for m is equal to zero okay so it's just going to be a flat line okay and then your reciprocals are going to be a vertical line okay so in this case uh within here sorry vertical line the reciprocal won't exist because it's uh zero okay if b is zero and then as you go negative okay your reciprocals change again all right so that's for lines now what would we expect if it was quadratic okay so how can we utilize the same tricks Okay, if it was quadratic. So do all of these hold? The answer is yes. So all of these that we had here, so all of these bullet points are also going to be holding for quadratics as well. And that's really nice because it's something that we can utilize to graph these quadratics. So let me give you a quadratic. Let's kind of sketch it out and then let's see what happens. They won't be as, as nice and, and simple, but super helpful. Um, in terms of doing it. So here's a quadratic. So let's say we have g of x is equal to, um, you know, maybe let's put this x and let's put this, let's say maybe minus one squared and let's bring it down a notch. So minus, I don't know, minus two. So our vertex is gonna be one minus two so we can certainly graph our parabola in this case. Um, we can graph a couple points, you know, a few points, and then we can do it. So let me graph it first. All right, so here is our quadratic, okay? So that's what we're, we're going to be dealing with. Um, and now let's utilize, okay, so the things that we have learned to try to do the reciprocal. Now, the reciprocal is not very nice, right, because if we put 1 over g of x, so what that's going to be is 1 all over all of this junk, which is x minus 1 squared minus 2. And, you know, it's not very pretty, okay? Now, notice there are two zero crossings. Now, we can find those zero crossings if we really wanted to, okay? So these exact points, so let's, let's do that. And what I'm referring to is these, these points. Um, now, why would we want those zero crossings? Because we know that at those points, we're gonna have asymptotes, okay, going up, because that's a zero. So g of x is equal to zero, which means one over g of x, which is one over zero, is undefined, so those have to be asymptotes. Now, those exact values, you know, we can use. So when does that happen? Um, so let's kind of recall, so this is setting g of x to zero. So this is zero equals x minus one squared minus two. So I'm gonna just solve this to find exactly what those zeros are. So this is two. Okay, it's gonna be square root x minus one. All right, so we have those. And so that's going to be, now since I'm taking square root, so it's plus minus. So my crossings, so it's gonna be one plus minus square root of two, all right? Because it's already in vertex form, so it's much easier to do that. If it wasn't in vertex form, you can always put it in vertex form or you can use the quadratic formula to find those zeros. 
Okay, so what would that be? Um, so, you know, approximately, let's try to put those in. So one minus square root of two, so approximately negative 0 0.41, four, so on. And then the other one, which is one plus square root of two, which is gonna be 2.414 and so on, all right? So this is what it's gonna be. So that means those points, those two points right there that I have, um, and actually it looks pretty good in terms of my graph. Now, those are my, so here, so those are gonna be my asymptotes. So it's gonna be a, a funky kind of, let's do that, all right. And now, okay, so let's take a look. Um, so where the function is equal to one and um, negative one, so we know that the reciprocal is, um, uh, the reciprocal is also one or negative one. Now I have two points actually here. Okay, so notice in here, so this point right here, well, that's a one, maybe I should uh, put it in a different color. So it pops out for us, maybe red. Okay, and then this is another one. So we know that those cross, okay? Um, on that range, so below the zero, so y is equal to zero, right? So that's y is equal to zero is gonna be our asymptote for our reciprocal function. That's what we will have. So anything above, which is positive, okay? Notice the reciprocal has to be positive. And then anything below, which is negative, the reciprocal has to be negative on that domain as well, okay? So as you go in this direction, so these numbers are getting kind of bigger, which means my reciprocal has to get smaller. So it's gonna be blowing up because it's negative. So it's gonna be something like this. It's gonna cross through here. And then on the other side, it's gonna be something like this, which blows up in this direction. And now, so this point, right here, which is, I guess, a negative two. So notice, negative two, which means one over negative two, that's the reciprocal, so it's gonna be a half. So that's gonna be my peaking point right there. So there we have it. That's my reciprocal on that particular domain. Now, the one, okay, so on this side of the, so on the right-hand side, so on the right, so what do we have there? We know that it's all positive. So in here, okay, so in this, as you go in this direction, where's my one? My one is somewhere here. Okay, so that's my one, and my one is somewhere here. So we know that it's gonna have to cross through here. In this direction, okay, it gets smaller, so that means this gets bigger. So this is gonna again blow up like this, and then go something like that. And then here, this is gonna do the same thing. So this is gonna blow up in this direction and it's gonna go like this. Okay, and it gets, gets closer to zero. So that is my sketch from my um, understanding, okay, of all of this. So notice, so for each zero, there's a vertical asymptote. If the original is positive, the reciprocal will be positive on the same domain. So that's what I did. There's a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero because of those um, crossings that we have. If the interval on the original increases, the reciprocal must decrease, okay, and then vice versa. And then your original, okay, if it's one or negative one, your reciprocal also has to be one or negative one. So that's what I used in order to sketch this out, okay, to give that to us. Let me pop up Desmos for this so that we can see it as well. Okay, so here's Desmos and I just um, plugged in all this. So f of x equals two, I made a general a. So a is equal to one for, well, in this case actually it's g of x. So maybe let me put g of x. A was equal to one, so notice H is equal to one, um, K is equal to minus two, okay? So that's what we have there, and this is my sketch, so it's basically how I had it. 
there. And so now we're gonna have to kind of um, take a look and see, you know, what uh, what what happens um, uh, with respect to our graphs. Okay, so we had our so this was you know one point. So this was negative one. So notice that that was through the crossing. Okay, so that we had there. Okay, so that negative one. Okay, it was also on the other side, and then positive one. Let me maybe do it like this so we can see it. And now okay, I'll put it like that. And let's put our reciprocal. Oh, there we have it. So notice the asymptotes, um, which happen okay, at those particular points that we've mentioned. So that was one plus minus square root of two. So those happen and notice the blue is our reciprocal, which is exactly how we sketched it. And now, I mean, you can play with this as much as you like, right? So if A is bigger, so we know that our parabola, so basically gets stretched out like this. This is from all those transformations. So that means it's gonna bring this in much further, okay? Um, now, if you go and you start expanding it, that's what happens. When you flip it over, so notice what happens here, it looks completely different. Now, the reason is, notice there are no asymptotes here because of the fact that we have no zero crossings of our original parabola. So we're still following, notice the parabola is fully negative, the reciprocal is fully negative. There's still that um, y is equal to zero asymptote, okay, for this. So that's what happens there. So that's pretty neat. Now, if I go back in here, so this is how we, so notice the graphs of the, these are different. Now, if I'm gonna shift these, obviously it just shifts left or right. And then here, this makes it a big difference because if you're gonna start shifting up and down, okay, so notice what will happen is your parabola changes. Now, we still have zero crossings here, but as soon as we get rid of these zero crossings, right, as we go up like this, okay, notice what happens then our reciprocal no, no longer has any um, asymptotes at all, okay, on the vertical side, only the horizontal y is equal to zero. So I would encourage you to play around with this and see, but these reciprocals are super useful to be able to know how to graph. All right, thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Okay, bye everyone.